I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. The full face snorkel mask market has witnessed significant growth in recent years because of the obvious advantages. Natural breathing, masks conceal better than goggles, better visibility, anti-fog. It is so easy for beginners if you don't intend to dive deep. However, you may hear some people advise against using it. So today we are going to have a detailed analysis and show you how to test your mask to spot out the problems. Even though manufacturers are continuously focusing on product innovation, to enhance the performance and safety features. You should pay attention to the following two potential problems. The first concern is safety. There are two papers at NIH, National Institutes of Health. This is one 2023 paper at NIH. The conclusion may result in rebreathing due to non-unidirectional flow leading to hypercapnia. Another 2022 paper at NIH read, mask models showed patterns of increasing breathing resistance with water intrusion and this increased resistance could potentially create elevated levels of respiratory distress. Let's compare three masks. These two are full face masks, and this is the traditional. This one has double tubes. This one has single breathing tube. Let us look at two full face masks. They both can be divided into two parts or a nasal pocket. And the, the eye pocket. Let us compare these two masks, inhale and exhale paths. For this mask, there is one snorkel attached. When breathing through a full-face snorkel mask, inhaled air is drawn down the snorkel. To better see this path, I inserted a white shoelace to mark the path. It goes through the eye pocket first, and then into a sealed or nasal pocket through a couple of one-way valves. These one-way valves are designed to isolate the or nasal compartment from the eye pocket during exhalation. When exhaling, the CO2 gas passes through another one-way valve at the bottom, and from there, there are two possible paths. The first is just here to expel the exhaled air into the water. The second is to go through these two holes, and from there, the exhaled air is expelled up a separate expiration channel to the snorkel tube. To better see this path, I inserted a red shoelace through this path, so that we can see how it goes through this hole at the bottom and up to the tube. Notice that the tube is actually divided so that the half of this tube is being used for inhaling, half for exhaling. The inhale pathway is marked by the white shoelace and the pathway designed for exhaling is marked by red shoelace. The red shoelace path is hard to see and understand so I am now showing a more detailed trace of this path. When the mask is functioning as intended, unidirectional airflow should occur with no mixing of inhaled and exhaled gas. This means the eye pocket contains normal air and only the oronasal pocket has a higher density of CO2 gas when you breathe out. However, if the seals or unidirectional valves are not working properly, the larger eye pocket may also build up air with higher levels of CO2 which leads to the warning from the medical paper we mentioned earlier. Compared with the traditional snorkel, a larger pocket of CO2 is less safe, so we need to make sure the valves are working properly. Here's my own tip to test the unidirectional valves in three steps. Step one, tape the bottom so that when you exhale, air will not go out through the bottom. Step two, Test the seal between your face and the mask. Inhale while covering the entire top of the tube with your palm. Because the top is the only way to breathe in, you should feel pressure on your face since the airflow is completely blocked. Step three, test the unidirectional valves. Exhale while covering the half tube with red shoelace to block the exhale path. Because the exhale path is blocked, the mask will steam up and you should feel high pressure inside the oronasal pocket when you blow. If there is a leak, you won't feel pressure. Note, do not use the mask if the unidirectional valves leak. Let's look at the second full face mask. This one has double tubes, one on each side close to the mouth. When inhaling, unlike the previous mask, the air does not travel through the eye pocket first. Air can reach both the eye pocket and oronasal pocket as indicated by the two shoelaces. 
There are no unidirectional valves between the eye pocket and or nasal pocket. Since there are no unidirectional valves between the eye pocket and or nasal pocket, CO2 will be expelled through three different paths. One goes through this large unidirectional valve at the front and is released to water. The second is to go back through the tubes, the inhale path. The third is that some CO2 goes into and may stay in the eye pocket. Since the exhale path does not all go into the eye pocket, the CO2 density may not be too high, but nevertheless is still concerning. How much CO2 is trapped in the eye pocket depends on the pressure from the other two paths. You may have higher CO2 density in the eye pocket if the pressures present under the water and the tube are higher and not all the CO2 is channeled out. So you should not use this kind of full face device for too long underwater. Quoting the suggestions from the paper, at least some full face snorkel masks enhance the risk of hypercapnia and possibly hypoxia due to rebreathing arising. Manufacturers and future snorkelers should be made aware of this new information to prevent unsafe situations. The full face masks include the dry top design. Some traditional snorkeling masks also include dry top design. Dry snorkels prevent water from entering the snorkel tube. The floating ball in the breathing tube goes up to allow the valve to close automatically when you are snorkeling underwater or when a wave comes over, efficiently avoiding choking by water. When the top of the snorkel tube is above the water, the ball drops down to open the tube. We can continue to examine the details with our previous white inhale shoelace and red exhale shoelace. We trace the white shoelace from this half tube to the end of the tube. When air is sucked in at the top, the air goes in, then up and around this ball and down this path. If water enters, the ball floats up and blocks the inhale path at the top, and you will not inhale water. Thus it is called dry top design. We open up the other mask's snorkel tube to see what's inside the tube. You see a washer. When the ball is rising due to water, it will fit right on the washer to seal the tube well. Next, we trace the red shoelace from this half tube to this unidirectional valve. If we exhale, the valve can open, otherwise the valve is closed, preventing water or air from coming in from outside. Once we understand inhale and exhale paths, we can perform the following test to know if the dry top is working properly. Step one, pointing the tube down. Like this simulates the ball floating in the water with the ball going to the top of the tube and blocking the inhale path. You can suck on the tube to feel higher pressure to verify that the inhale path is blocked and the dry top is working. Step two, Pointing the snorkel tube up like this simulates the being above water, meaning the ball will drop and open the inhale path. If you suck on the tube, you should feel no pressure. Air is moving freely, verifying that the inhale path is working. Step 3. To verify the exhale path is not clogged, you can blow into the tube and should feel no pressure, regardless of what direction the snorkel tube is pointing. You can either blow into the tube directly like this or through the mask. If the dry top fails for a full face mask, or if the face seal leaks, water can be drained on the bottom of the mask. The splash guard is another characteristic of the dry top design. While the dry snorkel is more convenient and efficient to use than the conventional or flexible snorkel, it does have some disadvantages. The top of the snorkel can occasionally become clogged, making breathing difficult. The dry top design may contribute to increasing breathing resistance. The second issue is equalizing your ear pressure. If you dive deep, the pressure is 14.7 psi at the ocean surface. As you dive deeper, it increases 0.445 psi per foot. If you dive 10 feet, your nose and your ears will have 4.45 psi pressure differences. To equalize the pressure, many people pinch the nostrils or close them against the mask skirt and blow through the nose. Some full face mask designs include a flexible silicone nose section to be able to pinch the nose. If you cannot pinch your nose, you could try equalizing your ears by either swallowing or rotating the jaw instead. 
In addition, diving under the water is somewhat more difficult than when you have the traditional snorkel with goggles. With the FFSM, you have a larger airspace inside the mask, so the mask contributes to your buoyancy, your ability to float, meaning it is harder to go far beneath the water surface. So if you are fond of diving a bit deeper, this may not be the right kind of mask for you. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the Genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.